Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to be reacting to interview with a senior c -sharp developer in 2022 by the channel Programmers Are Also Human. Now, this channel focuses on making sarcastic videos on different programming languages and developers and they made one for c -sharp. and originally I wanted to make a blind reaction to this as a c -sharp developer myself, however I needed permission and they're very hard to find. I had to dig into Facebook of all places to actually reach out to them and then wait for a reply and then get confirmation from them that I'm okay to make this video. So glad they replied because this is a really funny video and I highly recommend you subscribe to them. They make hilarious videos for basically all popular languages. The JavaScript videos are hilarious. I'm not going to react to the full video because I just don't think that's great. I'm gonna put a link in the description. I highly recommend you check the video, you subscribe to them. They're doing a great job, very, very funny videos. You are definitely missing out if you haven't seen them. And also as I'm going, I'm going to try and give you my opinion on what they say and if I think it's true or fair criticism or if it's a nitpick or whatever. It's one of the most popular <laughs> and loved languages on this planet, according to Microsoft. Yeah, I mean, this. I think this is referring to the Stack Overflow survey where ASP.NET, I think, is one of the most popular frameworks and some of the languages like f -sharp are extremely popular as well. So I think that's a jab to that. Now, I don't know why they would say according to Microsoft, Stack Overflow is an independent third party uh, survey, but it is funny because you hear that a lot. Microsoft job, I mean, C sharp. Okay, so that's fair criticism. C sharp originally was created to be a competitor to Java and the early versions look very similar. Now, in case you don't know, they have branched out quite a bit and modern C Sharp looks nothing like modern Java. Uh, I think you can have Java code to a degree be valid C Sharp, but C Sharp won't be valid Java. And again, that requires some modification, um, but they step on the same principles. So that is a fair comment. And in the beginning, that was the inspiration. In fact, uh, Matt Storgensen, who is the lead now for C Sharp, I butchered his name, by the way, um, worked originally for generics in Java, I think. So we even have some of the people that worked on Java in C Sharp. It's 2022. Microsoft is different now. <laughs> Mostly. C Sharp has always been cross-platform since April 2016. C I think since April 2016 is when Dunder Core 1 came out officially in GA. Now, I wouldn't say it was cross-platform then, like technically you could run it, but I think it took all the way to either 2.2 or 3.1, where it was actually usable, um, or maybe 2.1, but basically it was like one or two years after that, that you could truly like use it in production, at least from what I've seen from being a developer using it. Why would you let the community contribute on something so perfect? <laughs> <laughs> All languages have a similar learning curve, except for C Sharp. It first goes exponentially up, 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 and then it stays constant, while Microsoft is extending the tail with new features. <laughs> yeah, that, that's fair. What is the. Microsoft, yeah, is adding quite a few features to C Sharp to the point where what is C Sharp really? It's a bit of everything at this point. Like many, many very nice functional features are being added in C Sharp more functional than object oriented to the point where C sharp is heavily inspired by F sharp, which is a great language, by the way. So that's good, but it looks like it's very much focused to the functional aspect and the performance aspect and the roots are a bit left behind to a degree. Oh, you like unity? Well, that means you like C sharp. <laughs> yes, you like C sharp. Some people don't know this first unity. Unity C Sharp is like tons of versions behind, and I think only now they're catching up with C Sharp 9 or 8, basically with the more modern versions. When I tried it, it was just some very old, like C Sharp 7, C Sharp 6. It was an old C Sharp version. Um, it wasn't great. And people coming from Unity to try to write like APIs in C Sharp, it looks completely different. So just because you know how to write C Sharp in Unity doesn't mean you can write more than C Sharp. You have to adapt your code to that. And also a lot of the practices that Unity is built upon 
you don't really use those practices in proper modern C-sharp. C-sharp is not popular? Who said it's not popular? A comment from 2015. No, no, no. Is that, is that the job for, to me for making this video? Maybe? ASP.NET is the second most liked web application framework, after all, according to Microsoft. It's not according to Microsoft, it's according to Stack Overflow. But I get your point. So, or which one is number one? ASP.NET Core. Extreme. <laughs> Uh, let's uncover a great myth here. C Sharp isn't just used for game dev. You can do a lot of other things in Unity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a troll. I am sponsored, by, I mean, not sponsored by uh, Microsoft. I am not sponsored by Microsoft, by the way. I wish, like, Microsoft reach out, I need money. The fact that AWS sends me more stuff than Microsoft is hilarious. C Sharp mascot Andy. .NET mascot. In case you don't know, there was a C Sharp mascot back in the day called Andy. I can't remember which animal it was, but it was named after um, Anders uh, Hasberg, who was the original creator of C Sharp. So that's Scott true. .NET Bob. And these are the secret commands if you want to go next level. Yield, fix, unsafe context. Be careful with yield. Don't use fix, don't use unsafe unless you really know what you're doing. You're not gonna go to the next level, you're gonna shoot yourself on the foot. Be very careful. Stack a lock, make no. ref, go to. Stack a lock is good. To go to. Don't use go to. I use go. Don't use go to. They're not just adding random stuff no one asked for. I. <laughs> I asked for it. No one asked me. Faster than anything that is not compiled. Strongly. <laughs> So this is referring, I'm going to grab this. This is referring to the tech empowered benchmarks, um, which .NET is topping the plain text benchmark. So as you can see, it's pretty cool. It's 7 million requests per second. Um, however, this doesn't tell the whole story. The other tests are also very good, not as impressive. But I think this joke is referring to that. Java and C Sharp are totally different things. Yes. But I want to see what he's going to say. In Java, it's called JVM. In C Sharp, <laughs> it's called CLR. In Java, it's called Java EE. In C Sharp, it's called ASP. I mean, I wouldn't say that Java EE is the direct... Comp Isn't Java EE like obsolete or like very legacy? Isn't like Spring the equivalent of ASP.NET Core? I'm not keeping up that much with the Java EE stuff. I know about Spring and I'm more focused on the Kotlin or Kator um, scene because I think Kator is a great project, but I would imagine ASP.NET Core competes with Spring more than it competes with Java EE. They even changed the switch statement. Why? It's... <laughs> That's probably... So, switch expression was added. Fun fact, switch expression was also added in Java. So, it's a good feature. No, nullable, null... Able. We always <laughs> Again, they're taking the piss towards nullable reference types added in C Sharp 8. It's basically the same nullability model as Kotlin. Um, you assume everything is not nullable, and if something needs to be nullable, you have to explicitly define it. It's a great feature. It's a shame that it was added as an idea later because just people are not willing to adopt it now that they have tons of code that is not using it. And I think it's going to be a few versions before people actually adopt it. The default skeleton is not the same. And that's how the court ruled. <laughs> so this is talking about the .NET 6 templates that were added and completely changed the way a boilerplate project looks like. That's in the for the sake of removing the startup.cs, uh, which is for the sake of making C Sharp look simpler by just completely eliminating the extra classes that presumably you don't need. Uh, people did not like it, but Microsoft did it anyway. And now if you want to use them, you either have to use the previous version's uh, templates or you have to create your own and then use those. Uh, fair comment. People are really complained about this. No, but on a serious note, Await Async was C Sharp first. It was C Sharp first. In case you don't know, the Await Async you see everywhere, that was used in C Sharp first. It is a Haskell idea that F Sharp had technically before that. Uh, but the way it's implemented and how elegant it ended up looking, I think that was C Sharp Five or six. CIL bytecode is easy to reverse engineer. Well, then we're basically giving you the code open source for free. How nice of us. .NET framework is going to be supported for years to come. It will never die. There's still people. <laughs>
<laughs> I actually really like the new nullability operator. The one of uh, one in a million. Woo! <laughs> Can I try something? <laughs> Woo! We have quite a few null related operators, that is true. Just use something that isn't supported in C-sharp and it will suddenly be supported before you know. It's like they're sending your code in the crash reports. Well, pretty accurate. I don't know how they tend to be so accurate with so many different languages because I've seen other videos of languages I know and their comments are so spot on. Even though, you know, every now and then you get one that isn't that accurate, it looks like they have pretty good sources on their respective uh, languages. So, incredibly funny stuff. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Great, great videos. Thank you very much for watching and keep coding.